Natalie. I'm Alex. Uh, welcome back to our channel, or welcome if this is your first time. We live in a schoolie in West Texas, and we wanted to hop on today to talk about the costs of city living in a schoolie. I think a lot of people get into the schoolie lifestyle to kind of be nomadic, to live on BLM land, try to really keep costs very low, but unfortunately because of my job, um, we just can't do that. I have to be in a city. Uh, so when we were looking to move, I just really couldn't find any videos talking about living in a city in a schoolie or living in an RV park. So that's what we're doing today. We're just going to lay out the costs for you if you choose this option. And honestly, it's probably more affordable than the nomadic lifestyle because diesel yeah. is very expensive. So um, it's just an option. Like we really like, we haven't traveled a whole lot quite yet, but we do really like living in the bus and uh, the tiny home kind of lifestyle. So uh, to get right into it, the most expensive thing we pay for obviously is the, the space in the RV park that we live in. And when, we, when I did my, our research, they ranged from $300 even up to $440 in our area. And it may be a little bit more or less expensive depending on where you live. But we actually opted for the more expensive um, RV park. Mm -hmm. And it was for a couple reasons. The main reason, which I would probably do regardless of the others, is that this park is only about seven minutes from my work or so. The most cheap one was like 30 minutes from my work. Um, so we value our time, our time freedom. So that was a, you know, I'd be willing to pay an extra hundred dollars a month to not waste an hour of my life driving every single day. So that's the biggest one. Um, we have a few others. The Another big one is that this park, uh, the water and electricity are completely included in the price. Can you calm down? And they're not metered. And they're not metered either. So, so like the most cheapest one I believe was metered where you'd have to pay for your water and electricity. Which you probably don't use that much of in a tiny home but I like to not have to worry about it or, or anything. Um, the other big one is uh, trash is also included. We have dumpsters really near us that we can use for free, which are great. And uh, security is another one. This RV park has like hourly, if not more, patrolling security and it's really quiet and really safe. So um, it was definitely worth the extra money to me. It yeah. probably wouldn't be that even that much more since it's not metered than some of the other ones. but. Just so you know, four forty a month. We, we'll tell you the price of the at the end of the cumulative if you chose the cheapest one. But uh, for us, it was four forty. Next is Wi-Fi. So we first started with our cell phones um, with a plan that had thirty. Is it gigabytes or mega megabytes? Gigabytes. Gigs. Thirty gigabytes of a hotspot that we were using, but no, shared. 30 gigs. No, it was each, I think. No, no, it, we upgraded to 30, okay. but originally it was 15 a piece. It was 15, 15 a, piece, a piece, and uh, but Alex was doing online school and remote work and having to do video conferencing and stuff, so we went on, I went back on and they had just like, I guess technology was advanced or something, so we were able to switch over for the same price to 60 gigs, gigabytes, mm -hmm. gigs a month. Um, and the cost with our cell phones, like we had like a nice new Samsungs at the time a few years ago, is it was 192 a month, which is kind of expensive, I think. Yeah. But it would have been totally enough for us to get by, even remote working with 60 gigs uh, a month. Um, but we wanted to be like really reliable. So what else? This is a cheaper option for you too. We thought we would include. So most RV parks, of course, have Wi-Fi. Uh, but the signal sometimes isn't great. With ours, they don't have Wi-Fi around the entire park. They just have it at the community building. So what I did was I got a Wi-Fi booster. Uh, the one I got that I found that works, the first one I got didn't work because it was uh, only made for kind of aiming two at each other. Mm -hmm. uh, so what we got was a TP-Link uh, CPE, which it looks like a looks like a satellite dish. And it's made so you're supposed to point two of them for like over long distance, but you can use it as a Wi-Fi booster. And it was like $60, um, pretty easy to set up, and then we just have run it to our own router. Um, but it, we just pointed that building and we had Wi-Fi. Yeah. Uh, so 60 bucks, 
and that's all the investment is. So the base for our cell phone plan was like 160, which is to do with the expensive devices. Like you could definitely have a cheaper plan if you just got like a lot older devices, but the addition of the giant hotspot was only about $30 from the base plan. So that's what I'm including in our monthly costs because uh, everyone has cell phone plan. But to specifically live in the RV park without Wi-Fi, it was $30 a month for our hotspots. Or you could do the one-time cost, like he just described, of $66. And that's also been pretty reliable. So yeah. we just feel like the wife, the little dish thing here it's is great. Too. It's really fast. Yeah. Uh, but we're also equipped now. If we do want to go on the road, we have these giant hotspots so we can remote work if we need to. Yeah. Um, other costs, we have a postal box, postal annex box. That's uh, $12 a month. And laundry here is really cheap. It's $1.50 per load for wash and then dry. So if we do about once a week, so $12 a month total yeah. for our laundry. Our bus doesn't have a built-in uh, laundry station. Um, really the last cost, if you can see, is uh, it's, it's um, not adding up too much. We have a composting toilet, so we estimate like five dollars a month for the composting brick that we use the like what is it like coconut or something yeah, coconut, it's husk. coconut fiber and then propane so we have a mini split for heat and um and air conditioning but our water heater and our stove are run by propane so what size is it that we get so we just get the standard 20 what is it i think a 25 pound barbecue tank and that lasts us quite a while between uh, mm. showering and using that since it's a uh, on-demand water system and unlike your standard water heater it only heats up when you're using water so it's really efficient on propane so um, that's $13 or so for about two months worth so we just estimated seven dollars a month for our propane use and again it would be more or less like depending on how much you use your showers and stuff Usually this RV park has free showers, free bathroom and everything, but they're currently closed due to COVID, unfortunately. So you definitely could kind of squeeze the money out of that a little bit. But um, that's really it for the monthly costs like we would associate with having a house or something. Um, for us, it adds up to $506 a month, which is not bad, honestly. Our la last house we rented wasn't very responsible, but it cost 500 a month just to keep cool in the summer. Yeah. It was ridiculous. So we're, we're happy, we're saving a lot of money from where we were. If you cut out the more expensive addition of the hotspots and you chose the cheapest RV park in our area, the cost would be 336 a month possibly need to have metered stuff though so that might be a little bit more but the buses but are pretty energy efficient it might so. be less depending on how much power yeah. you use so so somewhere between about 330 and 500 dollars a month is probably what you could expect if you decided to live in an rv park full time um and we were able to build you know buy and build our bus um completely out of pocket so we have no like payment monthly payment on the car or on anything yeah. I, I forgot to mention actually the, uh, insurance. the insurance is I believe 580 for an entire year yeah. so what would that be that'd be like 50 bucks a month or so so you can add that on I, I guess as well yeah. um, so we we are up to like 556 a month and uh, you know what pretty good it's honestly pretty good for us and we're gonna go on a big trip next month and it's kind of probably be a lot more expensive yeah, with, the, the with the diesel and making sure we have a safe place to stay every night and everything so um, that's what you can expect you can definitely live the nomadic lifestyle but you can also you know maybe take some breaks in the city um, and maybe even save some money I think it's a I think it's a really good option we're super happy it's quiet it's safe here a lot of families as well so um yeah yep. highly recommend so you know drop us a comment if you think that's a crazy price if you have any other strategies for keeping your costs low um living in a bus or an RV but you know for us it was a big drop in our costs it's allowed alex to go to school full time um while we're just on one income so i think that's all we have for you today uh you know tell us what you've been doing in your schoolies bye bye